Hello, Tad Hargrave here from Marketing for Hippies, and I'm very excited about this video. This is actually, I wrote a blog post about this topic years ago, but uh, almost every workshop for the past little while it's come up, so I thought maybe I'd do a video to share what I've been saying in my workshops. Uh, of course, fairly regu regularly, somebody in a workshop says something about charging what you're worth, and shouldn't we charge what we're worth? And sometimes that comes up in the context of I shouldn't give a discount, because then I wouldn't be charging what I'm worth. Or Tad, this pay what you can thing, don't you think maybe you're not charging what you're worth or it could give that impression and yeah, something like this. And so, of course, at that point I have to stop everything uh, in the class to contend with this because traditional people have uh, understood, you know, I think since time immemorial all around the world that spell casting isn't done with the hands, it's done with the, the mouth, with the tongue. Spells are cast by things that we say. And many of us can think about something that was said to us as a child that still affects us today. You, know, you can't sing. You're no good at that. Um, you should stop being so friendly. You should be more friendly. All these messages we get, and they, these spells get cast on us and they can uh, influence us for the rest of our life. And it doesn't have to be a lot of words. It just has to come from somebody we trust. Um, you know, have a particular emotional impact to be at a vulnerable moment. And so this whole charge what you deserve, I want to suggest is a spell. And it seems like such a good one. It seems like such a noble, it's such a uplifting idea, isn't it? So we're encouraging people to believe in themselves and self-esteem and, and not to undersell themselves, not to sell themselves short. And who would want to charge less than they deserve, you know? Because um, certainly there is an epidemic of people charging less money than they need to sustain themselves. That's a real thing. Uh, so I'm not contending with that. But what I am contending with the framing of it, that the solution becomes charge what you deserve. Because if that's the solution, that we need to charge what we're worth or what we deserve, then what that's framing the problem as is the reason we're not charging it is because we don't believe in ourselves and uh, we don't think we're worth it, we don't think we deserve it. So let me just see if I can save you years of therapy on this, because that, that's where this goes. Oh God, I'm not charging what, I, what I'm worth, so I must need therapy to really believe in myself, get in touch with my, my, myself, <laughs> maybe, you know, get in touch with my worth believe in myself so I can I can officially charge that. The whole thing seems like a red herring to me, an utter distraction from what's needed in this conversation around pricing. Because I mean, just consider the madness of this. Charge what you're worth. Okay, so we could agree that you're mortal. Yeah, you will die at some point. Sure. Okay. So that means you're only going to live so long. And uh, your genetics seem pretty good, so let's say you live till you're 100 years old. Okay, great, wonderful. And let's imagine, somehow, that you work the whole time. You just keep doing this work, maybe a little bit less. And let's say that's five days a week. And let's say it's eight hours a day. So eight hours a day of work for 100 years, for 52 weeks, starting when you're 20. So that whatever that number is, yeah. So we know that that's the number of hours you're going to work. Okay, well, that makes sense. Okay, well, now that we know the number of hours you're going to work, we need to figure out your hourly rate. Oh, yeah, well, that's important because I'm going to be charging per hour for, for most of my work. I do one-on-one -on -one work. So, yeah, I just need to figure out that rate. I need to make sure that it's, it's something that I'm worth. Okay, well, then what we need to do is figure out what you're worth. So uh, uh, what would you say? Is that a million dollars? Is it a billion? A trillion? You see the man? They just go crazy. going to put a price tag on your life? <clears throat> and then divide it up. I mean, if you believe in God, how could you not insult God with whatever number you come Because, of course, well, it's infinite value. But is that where we're going to go then? Well, you know, I sat down, I realized I have infinite value, and, and so I divided that by the number of weeks that I w work, and the number of hours I could work, and so you'll be charged infinity for this. So if you do this session with me, you'll be in debt to me for the rest of eternity. That's where that goes. It's so crazy. Okay, so if it's not that, then what is it? Well, I'm not going to go into it, but there's some other thoughts around pricing. The nutshell is, instead of getting wrapped up in charging what we deserve, we, we start with the facts of our situation. 
you know, what do other people charge? What are our expenses, etc.? And then how does it feel when we do what Mark Silver calls, you know, this resonant pricing model? And I'll, I'll put some of these links below. But I want to lift up, here's the scorpion's tail of this. Oh, there's a few. There's a few uh, unintended consequence of proceeding through the world from the frame of charging what you're worth. One is it sets you up for an emotional roller coaster. Because if you meet somebody who charges less, do you get to feel superior to them? If you meet somebody who charges more, do you feel inferior to them? Is that where this goes? You know, women in sub-Saharan Africa, they're worth less than us when they're breaking their back, working all the time, just because they're being paid less, is the payment an indication of the worth? And if we don't get paid as much, is it a slight on who we are? These are all questions that have to be contended with if you're going to go down that road. But here's the other one. So let's say you, you really drink that Kool-Aid. You say, okay, yeah, I've been undercharging. <clears throat> this is connected to my worth. So I need to believe in myself. Yeah. And you go to a workshop. And there's a big pitch and they say, we've got this coaching program and it's $10,000. And you think, oh God, that's so much money. And most of the people in the audience have this reaction. They say, we know that some of you may be feeling a little pulled back. $10,000, that's a lot of money. We understand. But and you can feel it coming. Don't you think, <coughs> excuse me, don't you think you're worth it? Don't you think you deserve this? Aren't you worth that kind of investment? And you see, if you make that kind of investment, that's a way of you loving yourself. That's a way of you affirming your worth in the world. Oh, wow, if I don't spend the $10,000, I guess it means I don't value myself. I don't see my own worth if I don't spend it. Wow, what a mind fuck. So it's just, let me say this, pricing and who you are, do it with these fingers. Pricing and who you are, utterly separate conversations. Pricing, what you're worth, separate conversations. They're not even in the same domain. It, um, I think it actually disparages them both to try to put them together. They just don't fit. Um, how can it not diminish your worth? And how can I not diminish the work to suddenly make it all about you and your value? No, no, no. So we separate these. Save yourself years of therapy by looking at pricing from an angle that has nothing to do with your personal worth or your value. People will say, oh, but the page you can. Don't, don't you think, um, yeah, this, this devalues what you do? Uh, no, the value is still there. People just choose what to pay based on what they can afford. Uh, and what makes sense to them at the time and the value that they got, that they received. I mean, there's a certain value in the program, but that's abstract. The most real thing is the value they got. And no, I don't see it as a reflection on me and my worth. Of course, if people started paying very little, I would have to change my strategy. But this isn't me. This isn't, I don't take it as an indictment of myself. If somebody gives me at a weekend workshop $20 and another person gives me $1,800. The $1,800 doesn't make me worth more as a human being and the $20 doesn't make me worth less. The only thing it's saying is that is what they could afford and what felt right to give. That's all it's saying. So anyways, there's a lot more to say about discounts and making things accessible, but hopefully that's helpful, uh, stimulated some thoughts. Take care.